welcome to School of the Bible. School of the Bible is our study of the scriptures from the Bible itself that we take 15 verses, we look at them and we consider what it is that God is speaking to us, what God is telling us, and how he is applying that to our lives. As I adjust this issue we have down here with what's going on with my desk, the um, purpose for what we do, really, is for God to speak to you. There's no other reason we should study the Bible. I mean, we could say intellectually, we'll study the Bible in order to learn the history of mankind. And that would be a legitimate study. We could say that we want to use it as a textbook for the archaeological sites that are going on in the world and find where we can compare those archaeology sites with what is recorded in the scriptures to see if the Bible is true. And that would be a valid study. But the reason we study the Bible is because what God can do with the written word is he can take it and make it into the spoken word, meaning he speaking to you. And the way that he does that is rather unique. Some people call it quickened, as in the King James did. You know, meaning that by his spirit, he causes a portion of it or a part of it to stand out to you. That's the way the Jesus freaks used to say it came alive, it jumped out at me. It was like in big, bold letters. It was in red. At least that's what it said. But no, seriously. God takes by the Spirit of God to the people of God, the Word of God, and reveals the Son of God, Jesus, to you. And how he does that is by his Spirit, being that you, as a normal person, can't understand the things of the Spirit. You can't understand the Bible as it being the Word of God. You can understand it as being the Bible, but not as it being the Word of God, unless you have the Spirit of God. You have to be born again, not of the flesh only, but of the Spirit also. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. You must, according to Jesus, be born again. If you're not, you can't get it. You won't get it, you don't got it, and you won't know it, and you won't learn it, and you won't do it. That's the bottom line, and why so many Christians that don't have the Spirit of God aren't understanding the Bible, don't know what they're reading, and don't remember or recall what is being said or taught because they don't have the Spirit of God within them. So, we allow for that by trying to make it as simple as possible, as little as much as we can get away with, to make maybe one thought or one point that you could understand and take with you today. Even if you don't, God forbid, have the Spirit of God within you. Even if you aren't, God forbid, born again. Even if you don't, I pray not so, know Jesus. But it is, of course, our hope our desire that you would learn to follow Jesus, to have, as it were, the experience of knowing God in an intimate and personal way. So, in Ezra 15.15, we're reading 15 verses and applying that in 15 minutes to what God might speak to each and every one of us, saved or not. So we read in Ezra, Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, Thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, The Lord God of heaven hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he hath charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is there among you of all his people? His God be with him. And let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is the God, which is in Jerusalem. And whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, let the men of his place help him with silver and with gold and with goods and with beasts beside the freewill offering for the house of God, that is in Jerusalem. 
Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and the Levites with all the men whose spirit God had raised to go up to build the house of the Lord which is in Jerusalem. And all they that were about them strengthened their hands with vessels of silver, with gold, with goods, and with beasts, and with precious things, besides all that was willingly offered. Also Cyrus the king brought forth the vessels of the house of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar had brought forth out of Jerusalem, and had put them in the house of his gods. Even those did Cyrus king of Persia bring forth by the hand of Mithridath the treasurer, and numbered them unto Shezbazar, the prince of Judah. And this is the number of them, thirty chargers of gold, a thousand chargers of silver, nine and twenty knives, thirty basins of gold, silver basins of a second sort, four hundred and ten, and other vessels a thousand. All the vessels of gold and of silver were five thousand and four hundred. All these did Shez Sheshbazar bring up with them out of the captivity that were brought up from Babylon unto Jerusalem. Now these are the children of the province that went up out of captivity of those which had been carried away, whom Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon had carried away unto Babylon, and came again unto Jerusalem and Judah, every one unto his city, which came with Zerubbabel, Jeshua, Nehemiah, Zariah, Reliah, Mordecai, Bilshan, Mishpar, Bigvi, Rechon, Bana, the number of the men of the people of Israel, the children of Parash, 2,172, the children of Shephatiah, 372. And so, whoa, do we get a history lesson of that which is God doing, God causing, and God verifying by this interesting statement that you should take to heart as far as being the part of what you want to focus in on today. And that is, his, who is there among you of all his people? His God be with him. One of the statements. And then the other statement is, I know the silence is golden. <laughs> uh... Let's focus in on that, because I'm not too sure what I was thinking of. I was thinking maybe of Nehemiah, because in Nehemiah it talks about the same statement. It's int interesting. I had to think about if that was the camera turning off or if it was something else. It's my phone. It's interesting that we're talking about his God be with him. Is God with you? That's what the whole point of Ezra is about right now. It's not about going to Jerusalem. It's not about building the temple. It's not about the free will offerings being sent. It's not about the declaration, which is a big deal, of Ezra, or Ezra, of uh, Cyrus making the statement, hey, everyone, listen, this is the God of Jerusalem. This is the God of, uh, he didn't say Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but the God that the house of God needs to be built. That the decree goes forth, and this is what the decree is, that there should be built in Jerusalem a house of God. And so, that's all important data, that's all important facts, that's all important statements, but the most important thing of all, that is for you and I, and for anyone that reads this book, really, is God with him. Because that's the criteria that is being left to a very casual statement. Who is there among you of all his people, his God be with him? Is God with you? Is God with me? Is God with those that you follow? Because if God isn't with you, God is against you. And if God be for you, then who could be against you? No one. So reality check for each and every one of us when we're reading the book of Ezra, when we start off in these first 15 verses, is the reality of, whoa, is God with me? God Emmanuel, God in me? God with me, God for me, and God help me. Because if he's not, then you don't have, as we were talking about in the beginning, the Spirit of God. You don't have that assurance of salvation. You don't know 
that God is for you and that God will also be against you if you're not for him or with him or God with you. You see, God wants to come inside you. God wants to abide with you. God wants to live not only on your outside, but on your inside. He wants to rearrange you upside down and outside in. He wants to take your stony heart and make it a tender heart of flesh. He wants you to go up and go out and to build the house of God. Not your churches locally and everything else to build some kind of, you know, manifestation of what you believe in or something that makes you feel good. But rather, he wants you to follow him. He wants you to know him. He wants God, as he is the God of gods, to be coming out of your mouth by saying, God is with me. God is with me. His God be with him. So my question to you is that you should ask yourself, even as you study the Bible, is God with you? If not, then you know what you need to do. Because you need to study, learn, and then apply the fact that you need God more than you need to study. So stop what you're doing and ask God simply saying, God, be with me.